Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. It is Wednesday, March 3rd. Big, big week for us. Lots going on. I'm going to take you through kind of the the, the background, the thing, the behind the scenes version of what's going on at the Ordinary Marathoner Foundation. Obviously, if you listen to Monday's podcast, we had Debbie Early, Scott Frassard, my wife Stephanie, the board of directors of the Ordinary Marathoner Foundation here. Probably the worst kept secret over the last few months. I, this is what I've been talking about when I've been saying, "Hey guys, uh, I got some really big news coming out." I, you know, and and initially we thought uh, we were going to get our tax exemption back in September, and that we would be able to. Uh, to do the ordinary half marathon. That's That was the race that we did over Thanksgiving. We thought we'd be able to do that for the Ordinary Marathoner Foundation, uh, but that turned out to be a rosy outlook and we wound up pushing it back. We didn't get our exemption until early uh, January, which is backdated. So, you know, some of it's... Um, we, we actually do have to file our taxes for last year, which is crazy, but we could, because we didn't hear for the, ta- about the tax exemption until January, but you know, enough about IRS. I gotta tell you, I get a lot of red tape stories <laughs> from the last year, but we don't have to talk about that. I just want to talk about the good things guys. Um, we finally launched the foundation on Monday and man, what a day. And I got to tell you, uh, I've, it's kind of been a, a roller coaster of emotion and, and, and things that, the things that have happened, uh, you know, I, that I have never expected. I have a very analytical brain and I like to look at things and say, all right, here's the next step. Here's what you got to do. Uh, check, 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 get the things done, move them forward, develop this, develop that and, um, and get things done. That's kind of the way my brain moves. What it doesn't, it, it rarely does it stop or contemplate sort of the emotional aspect and, and, and what kind of, uh, emotions that are going to go through you as you, as you go through this process. Now, we have been putting this foundation together for almost a year now. This idea came back, came to us. It came to us a while ago, but we didn't, didn't really put it in motion um, until I started asking some questions and finding out that some of you guys in the group were highly qualified uh, to help us with this uh, with this venture. And once we started going, man, it was just like, you just kind of knock over the dominoes one by one, but they're very slow dominoes. They're like, you know, very, and, and you just kind of work. It's like a long walk. It's like just, you just got to keep knocking things down. And I don't know, I got to tell you guys, you see some of these local foundations and local uh, charities pop up here and there. I don't know how they do it. I really don't. It, it was such a project for us. Uh, you know, we had to focus and, and work so hard, so diligently to make sure we're doing things the right way. Uh, and, and the slightest slip up, as we found out, the slightest slip up can cause such havoc and problems down the line if you don't, if you don't do it the right way to the, in the beginning. So, um, we were doing it the right way. I think we did, we did the best we could. Uh, and here we are almost a year later up and running, launching the Ordinary Marathoner Foundation on Monday. Now, uh, I got to tell you, it kind of felt like, it felt like a transition. It really felt, it felt like the, I, I kind of was thinking about this before and I was like, you know, this is like the bike to run transition of, uh, of a, of a, an, an Ironman triathlon, really. The last year has been us just kind of pedaling up that hill. <laughs> I always think of hills because of Lake Placid, but pedaling up that hill, getting things done uh, little by little and just moving your way towards that finish line. And really when you get to that line, it's not a finish line. It's still a start line. Like you have uh, in, in the race, you have a full marathon to go. And that's where we are right now is we've kind of finished that long, tedious bike ride and it's taken way too long. And now we have to transition from, um, you know, from getting that, that background work done to being a foundation and, and and looking at the foundation work, the, the reason that we're here to begin with, this is the good stuff. We got to put our programs into motion. We got to get things rolling. And the launch was like, it was such a, a, a prominent um, way to kind of move forward, I guess, to kind of draw a line and say, all right, we've entered a new phase. And for me, it wasn't even, there was some, there was just emotion, emotional differences going from you know, the phase of getting things done. And now we're now, now it's like, all right, now we got to work on this, on the good stuff. It's like for a year, we've kind of put the good stuff on the back burner and developed it sort of slowly and cautiously. And now it's like, now it's on the front burner. Now we're ready to go. So 
the, you know, we need, we definitely need funding to get some of these programs up and running. Obviously, we talked about some of these programs, um, in, in detail on the last podcast. Scott's program in particular is probably the first one to go. It's going to be the first one off the shelf. We're looking at an April 1 start date. And we got a lot of work to do to get there. So, Scott, I hope you're listening. And, uh, I hope you know that, you know, you got me, you got me here too, man. We got a lot of, we got a lot of people backing you up and, uh, and program to, to help autistic kids get proper training for long, uh, for long distance running endurance sports. Um, and have them work from, you know, a, a state of sort of lower, lower fitness to getting them in shape and getting them ready to accomplish something maybe they thought they could never do. Maybe they thought that their autism was holding them back. And we, we've, uh, Scott's done amazing work and he's even um, located a coach who specializes in autistic athletes. And man, this program is going to move forward and I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be amazing. Steph and I are also working on some run clinics uh, that are going to start locally. We're, we're hoping to develop a curriculum, a comprehensive cu- curriculum for running clinics that we can then sort of branch out. We'll start in our local area and then branch out. We have a meeting. It was supposed to be today. got pushed to tomorrow. So we'll have more information on that too going forward. So we have a lot of, go- a lot of things going on, a lot of things that need funding. Uh, some of the other programs behind it. I know uh, Ron Booz's program, he's been working hard on that, trying to get uh, exercise equipment through the VA to to military veterans. I know um, Erin Shepard is working on a program for uh, for deaf athletes, and she's working with um, someone I know who is the former principal of the New York School for the Deaf. So there's a lot of experience there and a lot of, uh, a lot of education that's going to go into putting these programs together, qualified, qualified people putting these programs together and they're going to need some funding. Now we, we chose to have a goal of $5,000 for our, our launch for a fundraising goal. Um, where did we get that number? Uh, I think we kind of, it was a combination of, of one trying to be realistic on what we could potentially raise. We had no idea. We honestly had no idea. We didn't know how many people would show up. We didn't know how much they would give. Um, I think all of us are sort of reserved and we, we kind of hold back when it comes to that. And that's one of, I think one of our deficiencies is we are, we're very kind of, um, sort of, I I guess, passive. We're not good marketers. None of, none of us are in your face. None of us want to be overwhelming. None of us want to constantly remind you about the things that we're doing. Um, we're all reserved in that way. And we are probably going to hire a marketer or do something like that or, or get someone involved maybe that's in marketing. But, um, you know, we wanted to set set it low and be realistic, uh, but we also wanted to get these programs off the ground. And I think that's where we kind of looked at it and said, hey, you know what? We got to set this bar a little bit higher so that we're not stuck here having all of our programs looked at and having all of them go, hey, um, you know, we're ready to, to launch on these things, but there's no funding. So we set the, we set the target for $5,000 thinking, all right, if all of our programs are ready to go tomorrow, this would be a good amount that we could have that those programs would be able to launch in, in some form. Right. We do what we do think. And everything I think that we're doing is sort of scalable. So if you get some people involved at the first level and we get these programs up and running and we can see that they work, that they help people, that they're going to uh, to, you know, to, to do good things. And then you can see it and we can spread the word and then we can kind of uh, we can scale those projects up as we get more and more donations. It's it's going to work. It's happening and, and it's phenomenal. And it's um. I tell you, shifting from that getting things done legally to start the foundation to now we're on foundation work has been amazing. It's been a little bit of an emo- emotional roller coaster. I was not ready. I was not personally prepared to see some of the names come in who donated money, to see how much they donated. Um, it was just incredible. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, I, I try to donate to causes. I got to be honest. I, I, I'm the kind of person that I like, if I see a fundraiser, I will try to donate, but I've donated like so many times in the past. And now I see fundraisers and it's like, uh, I can't, I can't donate as much money as I used to. Uh, I just, I donate to too many things. And so I kind of donate like 25 to 50 bucks somewhere around there. That is, I, I tell you, that is awesome. If you guys can give us that, that is awesome. It, the name comes in front of my face and I say, wow, that person is, is taking their time um, and believes in us so much that they can, they can just write that check. They can send that money, uh, and, and know that it's going to a good cause to a good place. And I think for me, you know, knowing that people are out there that sort of have faith in me, confidence in me and the, and the work that we're doing here, um, and, and seeing, and seeing the donations from Pete, from, you know, some of our, uh, some of our board members, uh, and their friends and their families, it just, it's a, it's, it was a night, it was sort of like emotional for me. It was a nice, it was a boost of confidence and it was, 
it was like, wow, like people are really, they're really taking their time uh, to donate. We raised $2,765, which by no means is a failure that we didn't reach 5,000. Uh, obviously, if you still want to donate, you can go to ordinarymarathonerfoundation.org and check that out. Uh, man, it's just been a roller coaster of emotion the last couple of days. <laughs> and it's been a lot of work yesterday. I got to tell you. So yesterday I was like, all right, here's all these donations that we had. Now I got to send thank yous and I got to send them their donation receipts, which is like another part of the process. And I wanted to do this personally because I didn't want, you know, I don't want, I don't want people, you, you do get an automated receipt, but I don't want people to think that they're, they're not in touch with the foundation. And for now we're small enough that, Hey, if you got questions to ask, guess what? You can call a CEO and he's going to answer the phone. Although I probably have it on silent while I'm podcasting. Um, if you got questions to ask, you can you can call me and ask. You can come talk to me. It's it's cool. Send me an email. Send me a message, uh, and, and I'll answer I'll answer any questions that you guys have. But um, yeah, it's uh, go to ordinarymarathonerfoundation.org, Hit that button, that donation button, and send it. You know, we can we we can still reach that five thousand dollars. I think if we kind of just leave the obviously the donation lines will always be open. Um, but we like to kind of do these fundraisers where we we do um, where we focus on. And getting some money up, and uh, so we can get these programs up up and running. Uh, really, some great ide- ideas, some great people out there. We'll have more information. I, I'm just like, you know, I don't know. I'm uh, <laughs> seriously. I'm, and, and I tell you what, now it's kind of rolling out of sort of this emotional. All right, people have confidence in me. To sort of like a pressure, right? It's almost like, and I don't know if you guys have ever raised money uh, for, for a, a charity when you're just marathon training. I know when I, I've done, I've done New York city marathon a few times and Marine Corps marathon, uh, to raise money for American cancer society. And it's, it's that feeling sometimes of, all right, now you got the donations. Like you got to run that marathon. There's no way out of it. So now we got those, donations. it's pressure, right? It's pressure. So I'm kind of feeling a little bit of that pressure too, where it's like, man, you guys had a lot of faith in me. Now we got to, now we got to show some results. All right now we got to put things together and show some results and we will we will i am confident it's pressure but it's good pressure it's like yes uh you know it's it's pushing you to do your best and i think for us uh at the foundation it's it's definitely kind of got everybody's eyes open and and i've gotten a couple emails the last couple of days of, from people who are working on programs saying hey i you know i i'm this has gotten me a little bit fired up like now i'm i'm really putting things into motion getting things together so um Guys, thank you all. Thank you for, for the people who donated. Thank, for, thank you to the people who reached out to me. Um, I tell you, I just updated, updated my LinkedIn the other day, and I just wrote, you know, I put, I put this as my next job. And I started getting people just writing me on LinkedIn like, hey, man, congratulations, great job. And awesome, awesome. People I haven't heard from in years. It was amazing. Uh, I'm feeling really good about this, guys. I'm feeling really good about it. I want to thank Joe Caniano. He's our latest patron. Joe, I will thank you again on another podcast as well because I feel like it's going to be buried here. Uh, another patron, a new patron for us over at patreon.com slash ordinary marathoner. Uh, if you want to support the show and, uh, it, you know, that's a good way to do it. Excuse me, my voice cracked there. I'm just so excited. Just so excited. Um, it's a good way to do it. Head on over to uh, uh, patreon.com slash ordinary marathon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Um, and you can be, or, or you can, I, you know, I know almost for, for this week, donate to the foundation. Uh, it's even better. But you do you do get your name read right on the podcast if you if you go to Patreon and you also uh, can get your name on the scroll at the end of the show. And again, thank you, Joe Caniano, for that. I got to tell you, the, all these little donations on on Patreon, big donations, some of them too. Um, it really helps get the show off the ground, keeps the show running, and uh, and keeps us sort of focused on the you know eye on the ball kind of thing. It's great. Um, man, I'm talking a lot today. I'm talking. A lot. All right, let's get let's get let's kind of take a deep breath and 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 kind of move the ball a little bit. Well, I was going to tell you about what happened yesterday, but oh, the thank yous. Let me tell you about the thank yous. <laughs> the sim. I, I woke up. This and see if tell me if you guys have ever had a morning like this. I woke up and I thought to myself, all right, today is the day I got to send out thank yous about, I don't know, 30 or 40 of them, personal thank yous. Just one email after that, I got to create receipts, um, which I found a way to kind of do fairly quickly, which I did. Uh, And I was going to send out these individual thank yous. I thought to myself, all right, I'm going to do this by 10 a.m. And I'll be able to kind of move on to the rest of my day. Well, I tried to do some short, you know, I looked at the task and I said, all right, there's shortcuts I can do here. So I tried to, what I tried to do was migrate my email to Outlook, which if any of you have ever done this and you don't have any experience doing it, uh, I don't recommend you do it (laughs) because I think I screwed something up. There were some other things I screwed up. I don't know what's going on. Um, 
But yeah, things were just messed up and, and I blew things up. I didn't have any access to my own websites. I was on the phone with my internet service provider. I was on the phone with my web host. I was, I was going and I don't know anything about computers. So talk, we're talking about firewalls and I, I, I don't know. I don't know. All right. You're the computer guys. Figure it out. And then you call you, you call, call this. This guy's blaming that person. That guy's blaming that. And then it just fixed itself. At about three o'clock in the afternoon, multiple four, things just, so I, I, I started a task that I thought was going to be done at, at 10 a.m. I didn't finish it until about six o'clock at night. Uh, I, so thank you guys for your patience. Those of you who donated, who were waiting for thank you, thank you, uh, responses thinking, oh, uh, look, they're not grateful. No, we are grateful. <laughs> We're very, very grateful. I promise you that. How many people? How many? How many people? Ex, you know, acknowledge their donate donations on podcasts the very next day or two days later. Um, I thank all of you guys for donating. It's, it was great. But yesterday, my day just had a big monkey wrench thrown in it right in the beginning. A task that I thought was going to get done by ten a.m. didn't get done until um, until way, way later. Uh, until yeah, like. Uh, like six o'clock at night. Uh, so I try to, I try to catch up on some things. Um, man, it, it just was, it was frustrating. Let's talk. So let's go talk about training because I got a lot to catch up on here. Cause the last we talked about training was last Friday. Uh, Friday, I, Friday was the first time we did the Friday 5k where I said to myself, you know what? I, I just knew it. I knew this was, I, I felt good all week. Um, I felt strong. I felt like my training's been on, uh, and I wanted to focus on the Friday 5K and try to set a new PR because I just been knocking things down, knocking the PR down week after week after week. And again, I use the term PR, um, even though my PR is like from years ago. But you know, I'm, I'm thinking this is a new training cycle, so it's nice to see those numbers go down. It's nice to see that hard work paying off. Um, and I've been kind of giving you guys the updates on this you know, week after week, because I've been trying, I've been really, I've been sort of racing the Friday five, sort of with a, a haphazard approach of, you know, a knowing that I was going to do a 5k, starting it out a little bit on the uh, conservative side and then pushing things if I felt good sort of way. But this time was different. This time I just felt, I felt fresh, legs felt good. Um, I felt like my training this week was, was, was just really good. So I, I, and I prepped myself for it. A lot of times I eat dinner before I run on the Friday 5K because it's at eight o'clock at night. Sometimes I eat uh, right before the run and that's not good. You know, you don't want to start a run with a belly full of food. That's just not smart. Um, and, you know, and sometimes even if I eat just, you know, a couple a couple hours beforehand, that food is still kind of hanging around. It's, it's still, you know, it's, it, it's not perfect or, or maybe I ate something uh, that didn't necessarily, that wasn't necessarily good run fuel. Um, so it's kind of weighing me down and holding me back. This time I went in just peak form, peak form. I held off dinner. I ate a little bit of sort of like energy bar stuff. Um, I, I was hydrated. I was in good form for the start of this run. And I went after it hard. Uh, Ron Booz was there with me uh, and he just kind of was like egging me on the whole time. Just, and I say egging me on, but he wasn't like, he was, he was, um, uh, consulting me in a, in a, <laughs> a very motivational, uh, fashion. Let's just say that. And he ran with me the whole way, pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. And it, and it worked. It worked It all. It, I just felt good the whole entire run. Um, my PR from two, from the week before, which was actually tied. So two weeks before, uh, was 27 minutes, 53 seconds. And I destroyed it on Friday, 26 minutes, 36 seconds, uh, smashing that thing by over a minute, a minute and 17 seconds, I think was the, was the difference, but, um, just feeling good guys. Everything feels good. Everything is, is improving. And I'm just in that good training mode that man, I'm feeling stronger and stronger going further and further every single week. And, uh, and man, things are working well. Saturday, we set up our uh, our long ride. Who who rode with me? A couple guys ran, rode with me. I think in the beginning, Kyle uh, and Joe Caniano came, went and they rode with me on Saturday. Uh, we did a course. Uh, I forget Octorbon. I think it's called. It's in Innsbruck, uh, in the Innsbruck world of Zwift, and it's a thirty plus mile course. Super super hilly. It took me a little over two and a half hours. My uh, my goal was to ride two and a half hours. I didn't take a break. I just went at it and, uh, and we got it done. So it felt really good to get that done. Check the box, you know, pretty good effort there. And, um, 
you know, just piling on success after success uh, and keeping things together. Now, the next day was our long run day and I was going to do 11 miles, 11 miles on the docket. And I got to tell you, um, I was feeling okay. I felt like I had appropriate enough time to get this run done. Um, I, I was feeling confident. I felt like, you know, last week I did my 10 mile. It was the first time I did 10 miles and I did feel like I had a little bit extra left in the tank. I was able to kind of push it out a little bit at the end. And I was like, you know, I could have done 11. I could have done 12. That was last week. This was this week. And I got to tell you, I started running on the treadmill and I just felt from the get go, I could tell it was a little bit more, uh, taxing on the body. Um, I remember last week I started my run and the first mile, I barely even felt like I was running. I felt great. And this week I just felt, I was like, I could tell I wasn't warming up. I wasn't getting loose. Um, you know, it, 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 the first mile was okay. It felt okay, but it wasn't as, as easy as it was last week. And I think piling it on, piling on, it just, it was, it was a challenge. It was a challenge and it took some willpower to get through. You know, I keep telling you guys, I hear this voice in my head and I'm starting to fight with that voice in my head when it tells me to stop. And the voice started appearing early in the run, three, four miles saying, all right. And I got, this is the evil voice. This is the evil voice in my head. It says things like, you could stop at eight miles, stop at eight miles. And that will give you an interesting story to tell on the podcast. Stop now. It will, you know, and you can then, you can kind of expand on why you stopped during the podcast. It will be a good podcast. And then you can overcome it later on. Uh, And then that will be a good podcast too, to overcome failure. And like, this is my brain trying to trick me into getting off of that treadmill. And I'm having literal conversations where I think these things and I respond. I, I, you know, I literally, I have to kind of kick that voice out of my head and say to myself, listen to that. There's that voice again. There, it's almost like a split personality. It is a split. It's the devil and the angel, right? I always think of the animal house with the devil and the angel. Um, but man, it it uh, it's challenging sometimes, and you have to overcome that. And and I did. I I was able to overcome it. I got the eleven miles in, and it was. And I definitely felt good about it. But it was definitely way more challenging than the ten miles were last week. And I, you know, I tried to kind of analyze it a little bit and look back and say why, what was different. And the, and I think what was different was last week we did a lot of zone two work all week. So we did a lot of work, but it was very low intensity, not very taxing on the muscles, not very, uh, not very intense. This prior week we did a lot of intense working out. We did a lot of intense, um, you know, intense rides. And I mean, probably some of the most intense workouts that we've done since we started really kind of getting the, the morning rides together back in, in August of last year. And uh, I mean, it felt good to get them done, but I think the over wear, overall wear and tear that it, it built up for the weekend and then doing the two and a half hours, which that's kind of been one of my longer rides uh, on a Saturday. It's been one of my longer rides and this one was very hilly too. So combine all that together. I think it was just a little bit, a little bit more wear and tear on the, on the muscles going into the, into the run on Sunday, but Hey, I got it done. So the willpower worked. I got it done. I feel really good about it. And those are the kind of runs you kind of look back on and you say, you know what? Not only are you practicing just running the act of running and getting 11 miles in, but you're practicing that mental toughness, that, that thing, that, 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 that you need to kind of overcome the voices when they tell you, you just should stop. Uh, have those, have those discussions in your head to get over those. Now, uh, I did take Monday off. It was the launch and coming off that, those two big workouts over the weekend, I thought, you know what? Good time to take a break. Took a break Monday. Uh, yesterday I had my battle with my, uh, with my thank you notes going out for the donations for the foundation. Um, I, I got all, you know, I got them all out by about six o'clock at night. Then we had some other work to do. We did, we made dinner for, uh, you know, for the family. Um, and by the time I had everything under wraps, put my daughter to bed, it was about nine o'clock at night. And I did have a bike ride. We, I skipped the morning. Um, I didn't get done with the foundation work on Monday night with the launch till about midnight. So I skipped the morning 5 a.m. ride. Chris Myers showed up for the first time. Uh, welcome to the to the group, Chris. Unfortunately, I wasn't there, but I think a, a bunch of people did show up. I, I'm happy that the ride gets done, even though I'm not there. And uh, and great job, guys, for keeping it up and keeping it going. You know, Romans was there. Ron Booz was there. Uh, I'm guessing Joe Caniano was there. Um, ama- amazing that this ride is is it's building, and it's so nice to see. It's so nice to see that you know at first it was me, just me. And then it was me and Ron. And it was me, Ron, and Mike. Mike joined the ride at 
uh, you know, at four in the morning. Todd Seiden, another one that comes almost all the time. Now, Joe Caniano, he's got his new trainer and he's showing up every every day at 5 a.m., every, every Tuesday, Thursday. It's great to see these things build. It's just great. It's just such a community vibe, a community feel. And if you guys want to join us, if you're out there and you want to join us and get that, you know, get that discipline, that 5 a.m. ride in. Maybe you're going to work during the day. You got to just check the box and you want to get it in. It's, it's hard. It's hard to get it in when you, you know, at lunch or at night. Uh, especially when you get home at night and you had a long day of work and you just want to sit down and eat some food and watch TV and you got that ride ahead of you. When you get it done at 5 a.m., you've checked that box. It feels so good. It feels so good. So if you want to join us, by all means, join us on those rides. Let me know and I'll send you the invite. Uh, but I got on the bike last night at, at about 9 o'clock, 9.30, uh, somewhere in between, and did a, a pretty hard workout. It was called 10-Minute Ramps. Um, basically, it was three, uh, two ramp ups, right? The first one was kind of a, uh, it was difficult, but not super difficult. The middle one was hard. The middle one brought you up over your FTP threshold. It brought you into some really hard work. And then the last one was a ramp down. So it started hard and got a little bit easier as it, as it went. It was, um, it was, it it looked, I tell you, it looked from the profile that like like it was going to be a tough workout. I think that when I'm not working out at five, when I work out at 5 a.m., I think I, I started at a disadvantage. I'm just rolling out of bed. Uh, I'm old. It takes me a long time to get, uh, you know, I'm 46, almost 47 now. It takes me a little bit to get warmed up. Once I'm warmed up, um, even then, it's like, it's just, it, I don't feel, we, we've actually tested this. We've done FTP tests in the morning and at night, and there's probably about a 10 watt difference, which is is not insignificant, uh, but a 10 watt difference between the morning and the night. And, and I got to tell you, doing this workout last night, I felt fresh. I felt good. I got it done. It looked really challenging. It, the middle set was a, obviously that was the difficult one. It was the obviously the difficult one, but it was uh, it was challenging, but not undoable. I did it. I passed it with flying colors. I do think I'm due for an FTP test. I am due. Uh, I feel strong. I feel strong, guys. It's uh, training works. Hashtag training works. And uh, and we'll see. We're gonna test that out really really soon. Maybe even this week. Um, so that ten minute ramp, I'll, I'll put I'll put a little uh, a, you know a little profile of that on the on the screen here. Um, that being said, the rest of the week I got a run tonight. We're gonna do uh, our Wednesday night run. Today's Wednesday, right? I'm losing track of days. Uh, Wednesday night run will come tonight. Uh, Thursday morning I will be getting up at f- at five a.m. tomorrow. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I am gonna go to bed early tonight. I am I'm due for some sleep, but I'm also due. For, I, I can't miss two rides in a row, and I will be there uh, tomorrow morning. And then Thursday night, we'll have our trivia ride. I haven't even started working on trivia. It's going to be movie trivia, though, uh, so get ready for that one. It's going to be really fun, and uh, and then we'll talk we'll talk to you guys again on Friday. Um, and that's all I got for you. Remember, ordinarymarathonerfoundation.org. If you want to donate to the ordinary to the foundation, uh, obviously we're still taking donations. We'll always be taking donations. We're working on our programs as we speak. We're really hard at work to get these things done. The pressure is dialed up on us now, and it's time to show you guys some results. And we will get there. I promise you that. Patreon.com/slash ordinary marathoner. If you want to become a patron, get your name added to the scroll that will be showing up in about ten seconds. So remember, every day is an ordinary day, unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys. <laughs>